Today's video is going to be chock full of a bunch of useful techniques within Adobe Premiere and After Effects to spice up your videos, impress your clients, add some more tools to your tool belt when it comes to your editing sessions. Welcome back to the channel, guys. I hope you've had a good week so far. Like I said, today is going to be nice and simple. We're going to be in Adobe Premiere, but of course, you can do this within Adobe After Effects. They have mostly the same built-in effects, and we're going to be mainly doing basic things like masking, changing some opacities. So even if you're not working within Adobe Premiere, say you're on Final Cut Sony Vegas, you can still pretty much follow along with this to apply to your own editing workflow. So in the past, we've talked about different ways to create freeze frame effects. We've talked about this jitter clone effect, which I made a tutorial on a few years ago. Today, we're going to mesh those two concepts together and we're going to apply some stylized looks on top of it to give you guys a bunch of different variations, those cool little jitter effects, jitter transitions, all the stuff that you guys saw in that beginning sequence. So let's go ahead and get right into it. As always, if you enjoy the content, leave a like, subscribe if you're new here, turn on that bell notification to never miss a tutorial, and comment below what you'd like to see next from me. So because we're going to be mixing together two different concepts, let's start with the basics and show you how to create the jitter first and then how to create the freeze frame. Then again, we'll add them together and we'll create some different variations out of it. So starting with a simple little jitter effect. What I like to do is just hold down alt on my keyboard, select the clip that I'd like to apply this effect onto, click and drag up. So now we have a duplication of the clip right above my original. We're gonna be doing that a lot throughout the video. Once you have that duplication, just select the top clip, pop up to your top left in your effect controls, and you're gonna see your opacity, motion. I also wanna mention if you want it black and white, I did this beforehand. I also just added a tiny bit of contrast here just to get this look. Go to your effects and presets here. You just need to search for the black and white effect. You'll see here it's under image control. So you can apply that if you'd like, but either way, now that we have the duplication, select it, go to your effect controls, where it says opacity, we're gonna go ahead and just experiment with the blending mode. So I can place it on screen. And then what I also like to do is apply a shake effect onto this duplication. So once we're shaking the footage and we've changed the blending mode, that's when you're really gonna see this jittering come into play. If you guys have any shake presets or plugins, you can simply just search for it in your effects and apply it. Or of course you can make your own shake effect in a very simple way by just going back up to your effect controls where it says motion here. At your beginning position, you can keyframe both scale and position. And then moving a few frames forward, you can kind of just make tiny little adjustments. So I'm just moving the screen back and forth. I also scaled it up a tiny bit just so that we can have the full screen. And you can just keep going through here and adding these little shakes. And when you play that through, you're gonna see how you get this jittering with the footage. So that's how you can go through and create your own built-in shake. But of course, if you do have some sort of plugin, I like the universe camera shake. If you do have Red Giant Universe, you can apply that here, save yourself some time. I like I like toning this down to something like 35%. Of course, you can bump all these settings up if you wanna go crazy with it, and it does all of the work for you. So that's just my simple little jitter. Depending on what you make your blending mode, you're gonna get some very different looks for this, so you can experiment on that end. I think this looks especially good with handheld footage as well. As you can see, whenever it gets up close and personal, where there's already some shake, I think this just really brings it up to the next level. So now let's go into the freeze frame method and as you see there's a lot of different ways where you can combine the two so let's start off with just creating a simple freeze frame over top of the jittering footage that we've already made before you get a lot of really interesting looks when you do this it kind of looks like there's a, this sort of parallax going on in here then we'll touch on some of these other freeze frame methods that you can apply so starting off with this footage here we're gonna do the exact same thing to apply that jitter footage I'm gonna hold down alt I'm gonna click and drag up, and then I'm just going to apply a shake, or again, use my keyframes to create my own shake. Also wanna mention, if you want a free shake preset, Jarl's Deadpool handheld camera presets, you can get those for free, I'll link that below. The universe camera shake, just to save some time. Put that on 35, frequency on three, and I'm going to change my blending mode and my effect controls to uh, maybe something like screen or lighten. Let's put it on lighten. You can see even when I have my blending mode on lighten, because this is blending a lot and because there's not too much shake, it doesn't look like there's that much distortion. What you can do is you can grab this bottom clip here and you can just click and drag it over a bit to offset the time. And you're gonna get a lot of these different kind of blending in transitions. And that's what's really gonna create this look where you kind of have the scene moving in and out from itself. 
Now a quick word from today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. I've actually really been enjoying the format of Skillshare. It's very teacher and student focused. You can work around your own schedule. There's a lot of creative classes to explore, real projects to create, and I highly recommend you guys look into this because there's so much value and things you can learn here. If you just take a look at some of my class lists here, you can see I've been learning about augmented reality, Unreal Engine, 3D, After Effects, Photoshop, business. I've really been enjoying Remington Markham's classes. I've been watching a lot of the 3D character creation stuff. So if you guys are interested, it's less than $10 a month for an annual subscription. So if you want to check it out for a limited time, use the link in my description to get a free trial of Skillshare premium membership. Now let's add in that freeze frame. We're going to start at the very beginning frame of this top clip here. I'm going to use my right arrow key just to move over once. So one frame, I'm going to click control K to make a cut. So now I'm going to hold down alt. I'm going to click and drag up. So I just made a duplication of the very first frame of this top clip here. And what I'm going to do is we can set the blending mode on this back to normal. Uh, we don't need the shake on that so we can delete it out of the effect controls. And again, that's just for this one frame. Next, what you want to do is you want to right click on that frame. And if you can't see that well, control alt and mouse wheel just to kind of zoom in. Go over to add frame hold. Once you've done that, you can just drag this out. And this should be frozen. If for any reason it's not frozen, just right click on it, try and click add frame hold again. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult, but you should be able to get this extended freeze frame here where I drag and there's just nothing happening. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna use simple masking to cut out our subject here so that he's staying the same while our background is going crazy. So select your clip again, go up to your effect controls and then under opacity here, grab your pen tool and just go ahead and click on your screen. And you can click the squiggly key on your keyboard in the top left above tab, to make this full screen. And I can just quickly go through here and kind of bend around here. If you're having any issues with the masking, I recommend you watch my easy tips to make your masking better for Adobe Premiere and After Effects. All right, so connect your mask. So what we wanna do here is if you drag along, you'll see this stays in place. Now to fix any of these issues here, you could always just click back on the mask in your effect controls. You can adjust the mask, or if you'd like, you can change the mask feather. So if I bump my feather up, it's gonna blend it more. If I lower it, it's gonna look more like a cutout. That's how we can add our freeze frame and still have that jittered background. So that's the basics of combining the two. And I wanted to use that just to show you the basic baby steps of the combination of these two techniques. Of course, if you guys want to, you can take this any steps further. You can add any different color grading onto the freeze frame portion. You can add any preset effects, any plugins to make it flicker, glow. You can add any little transitions just to make this pop in. So this is from my new preset pack, which is coming out soon. It's a simple little glitch in like that. All right, so before I show you the final culmination of these mixed together effects, which I'm gonna put on the screen here where you can see it kind of freeze and you get that jittering, let me first show you two quick little variations of the freeze frame in case you do want to take it to the next step. And I've made a full separate tutorial talking about five different freeze frame methods, but I think this is very quick and easy. So we're going to go ahead and recreate this here. And this is just a simple little freeze frame. And the main thing that sells this effect up close and personal were handheld and he's moving to the right. So it's really going to look like he's kind of leaving this clone behind. So you'll see that I already cut out this one frame. This is where I want the freeze frame to start. You guys can click C on your keyboard and just use your little razor tool. Hold down Alt, click and drag up that single frame. Right click on that single frame, click add frame hold, and then just drag it out. Again, all you need to do is go up to your effect controls, go to your opacity, grab your pen tool, and then just get a rough outline of your subject. All right, so we've connected that mask. And as you see, this effect pretty much sells itself because again, of those circumstances. So if you wanna have them kind of pop in and out, again, Alt, click, drag up to make another duplication. And this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click C on my keyboard to bring up that razor tool. And on this first little layer here, my first duplication, I'm just gonna cut off the first part and delete it. Now I'm gonna drag to where this first clip starts and I'm just going to offset it a bit. So that way you'll see it kind of pops in, but it doesn't pop in for this little gap here. But if you wanted to add another one, click and drag these up. Alt click down and you kind of make it like descending stairs. So you just lower a little bit more and this will be our third one. So we just take the positioning and our effect controls 
and we move it over. So just a quick and easy little brush up on some cool freeze frame effects that you guys can apply. Now let's get into the real combination of everything that we've been talking about, all those basic things into one. All right guys, so starting off here, of course, make the cut where you'd like to freeze and create the effect. You can either click C on your keyboard to bring up your razor tool. Of course, you can just find wherever, control K to make your cut. So I'm gonna go ahead and freeze it at this moment right here. Next, what you wanna do, we're gonna hold down Alt, just like we've been doing. Click and drag up to make our duplication in a video layer above. Now, what we're gonna do here, which is a little bit different from the first two things I showed you, is I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna freeze frame this right off the rip. So right click, add frame hold. What we're gonna do is we're gonna hold down Alt, click and duplicate that one more time. So we have two duplications, both of them have this frame hold on. And let's even do it to our bottom footage here as well. We might as well. Right click, add frame hold. All these three clips with a frame hold just on this image. Now that we have our three frame held clips here, we're gonna start on the very bottom clip. We're gonna go ahead and apply a camera blur. So just search for camera blur. It's the built-in one from Blur and Sharpen. Apply that to your very bottom base clip here. And if you wanna see what you're doing here, let's just hide these two video layers so we can only see the bottom. Now let's go to the effect controls of this clip and you'll see here's my camera blur. Let's change the percent of this. Let's change the percent blur to something like eight to start. I think that should be good. Now starting with our next duplication, let's show that video layer. We're gonna go ahead and apply a camera blur onto this one as well. And this one, you don't have to make it so crazy. You can maybe put it on something like four or five. And this first duplication here is going to be our jitter clip. So you remember from the beginning to create that jitter, all we need to do is go to our opacity and our effect controls. You guys can experiment with your blending modes. Maybe you wanna put it on light and screen. I liked putting it on hard light for this so that you can really see the um, contrast of the jitter. And you guys will know what I mean once we keep going along here. But the only other thing you need to apply is a shake. So I showed you how to create the shake earlier. Again, if you have a preset or plugin, that's the easiest way. If you guys don't have a preset or plugin, I said that you could use your motion here in your effect controls. You just keyframe and you just move frame by frame, tiny little adjustments here. Now, since we're working with a bunch of different effects, duplications here, to make this easier and to not run into any issues, I recommend instead of using this little motion tab to do that, I recommend you go to your effects and you just search a little transform effect. So you look up transform and under distort, you apply that onto here. So that way, now we can use this little transform in our effect controls to make all these adjustments. If you do wanna create your own shake, it won't be interfering with everything else. So now let's go ahead and show our final top duplication here. And we're gonna go ahead and freeze frame this using the freeze frame technique we've been talking about. So on this one, you go up to opacity. Again, we've been doing it the whole time. Let's just go ahead and cut this out. So once you've applied the freeze frame and cut this out, here is what this is looking like. You see your background is moving. You can see the kind of jittering going on here. And maybe it's easier for you to cut out the top clip before you apply the crazy shake, just so you can see how it's reacting with everything. So that may help. But say you maybe wanna add a bit more camera shake here just to really sell this. So you see, I just bumped it up. You can see how that's reacting with our freeze frame. It kind of looks like everything's out of focus and jittering around. What we wanna do here is let's add a bit of motion onto our freeze frame clip. This will create a bit of parallax looking effect where it kind of looks like it's changing perspective, but it's not really changing perspective. The jitter just makes it give off that feel. So select your top freeze frame clip in your motion, or of course you can apply a transform. I'm just gonna do it with motion, keyframe position and scale, move over a few. I'm just going to make a move left and make sure your blending modes on normal for the freeze frame clip. And I'm just gonna add a bit of tiny little movement onto here as we move along. You guys can play with that. You guys can experiment. I don't like all this crazy stuff. I kind of want more subtle. So maybe just try and make little tiny movement adjustments where you can space out the keyframes. And as you can see from the final result here, that's really about it. The only other things I applied on here, this is I think the real thing that's really gonna sell this effect and um, change it into something really cool is by applying transitions to kind of pop into this, applying little overlays on top of this. So there's really a lot you can do. If you wanna apply some overlays, the best place to start, I have some free overlays on my website. The link is down in the description if you are interested. And I actually used one for my free VHS overlay pack as you can see here. So to get this kind of dust over everything, where it goes like that, 
And this little turbulent displace transition, that's from my new preset pack, which is coming soon. There's any little presets, any little plugins. I think this is just like a little turbulent displace or wave warp or something. That's where the fun really comes in. There's a lot of customization that can go into here. So I hope this video did help you guys. Again, all very basic stuff, but I think that's some of the most useful information. These are really some good go-to things that don't take a lot of time to pull off that you can put on your videos and just add that little extra touch onto them, add a little bit of spice onto them. Please leave a like if you did enjoy the video. Since this one was pretty beginner, the next video is going to be more After Effects, a little bit more intermediate to advanced. As always, guys, thank you so much for supporting. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.